Hey guys, it's uh, David and Guy coming at you with another stock market news update. So according to, to Money US News, um, this is the complete Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. So to invest like Warren Buffett, start with these stocks. Famed investor in Berkshire Hathaway. CEO Warren Buffett has become a living legend on Wall Street for his practical value investing style and his tremendously consistent track record throughout the decades. Generations of investors have emulated the Oracle of Omaha. Buffett started investing at age 11 and over the years has turned a $114 investment into about or $87 billion. This year has brought some problems for Berkshire's portfolio, which saw its value plunge from $248 billion to $180 billion in the first quarter alone. The good news? The stock market has bounced back, and with it, so is Berkshire's portfolio, which it was worth more than $245 billion through September 30th. Here's a look at the entire Berkshire Hathaway portfolio through the end of the third quarter, excluding two very small positions in index tracking exchange-traded funds, SPY and VU. So starting off, we have Abvi. Give it a second to load here. So Abvi is one of the new positions the Omaha, Nebraska-based conglomerate entered into last quarter. As Buffett and his presumed stock-picking successors, Ted and Todd, begin buying more heavily into healthcare, uh, with such a huge portfolio, sector and industry allocation becomes very important, and thus far one of the themes for 2020 has been Berkshire's wholesale abandonment of troubled air of the troubled airline industry in favor of more healthcare and tech stocks. Abvi, one of the largest drug makers on earth, is a safe and steady bet, making a number of blockbuster drugs for autoimmune treatment and leukemia treatment. As so-called dividend as a so-called dividend aristocrat, Abvi has now raised its dividend payment annually for almost 50 straight years. The stock's current dividend yield sits at more than 5%. He's holding about 200 or sorry, 21.26 million shares at a value of 2.1 billion dollars. So, starting off the list is Abvi, a big pharmaceutical. Next, we have Amazon. And this is one that's shocked a lot of people actually because he uh, hadn't been in a lot of tech stocks, but by the time Berkshire invested in Amazon for the first time in 2019, the e-commerce and cloud computing giant was nearly 25 years old and valued at more than $1 trillion. The company generated 49% of all U.S. e-commerce sales in 2018, capturing 5% of the market share in the U.S. retail sector along the way. Amazon also is the parent company of video game streaming platform Twitch, cloud services platform Amazon Web Services, and grocery chain Whole Foods. As Alexa-enabled smart speakers and TVs are becoming... Ambiguous as well, Amazon stock is up about 380% in the past five years and up nearly 70% year-to-date through mid-November. Buffett likely wishes he owned more of Amazon, one of the portfolio's standout performers during the pandemic. He holds 533,000 shares at a value of $1.7 billion. So this is one of those that is not characteristically known. Uh, tech is not a big uh, player for Buffett normally, um, not in the past, but given that Ted and Todd are kind of taking over the reins, I would not be surprised in the coming years to see more tech being added into Berkshire's portfolio. Next, we have an old Buffett play that he's been a fan of for a long time, that being American Express. American Express is a global credit card payment and travel company headquartered in New York City. Founded in 1850, American Express has been a Buffett holding since 1991. It initially struggled in the early days of the pandemic with shares down about 30% year-to-date through early May as consumer spending fell. That said, Berkshire held through the pain, and shares have already regained the bulk of their losses in previous annual letters to Berkshire shareholders. Buffett has remarked that American Express is one of Berkshire's core holdings for the long haul, and AXP stock, which trades for about 17 times forward earnings, is the fourth largest position of Berkshire's portfolio. Buffett's company owns 18.8% of American Express. He holds 151.6 million shares valued at $17.1 billion. So this is one that he's held, geez, since before I was born. That's crazy. Long time holding for Buffett. But I mean, people use their credit cards. American Express has the best margin for individual cards per spending. So uh, Visa and MasterCard actually have more cards, but they spend less per card than American Express users do. So I, I, I love American Express. I'm actually planning on adding it to my portfolio relatively soon. Next is Apple. So best known for its popular MacBooks and iPhones, Apple is one of the largest publicly traded stocks on Wall Street with a market cap of around $2 trillion, essentially a must-own stock for any massive fund. And also an extremely well-run and profitable company, Apple stock is far away from the largest single 
is far and away the largest single holding in Berkshire's portfolio. Berkshire has more than a $15 billion stake in Apple's amounts for about 46% of Berkshire's total portfolio, although Buffett's conglomerate sold about $4.4 billion in Apple shares last quarter. That's peanuts compared to its total stake, and it's likely done simply to take some profits and rebalance. It owns 964.7 million shares at a value of $15.9 billion. Um, most of the time, when Buffett trims positions, except banks, because when he did that, he was just trimming to get out of them, most of the time when Buffett trims a core holding, it's because he gets uh, to 10%. So there's a certain uh, limit that I think at like 10%, you have to get investigated or you have to like sign papers or something like that. It, there's a certain percentage of if you own a business, you have to do something when it comes to like government uh, issued stuff. I think you actually have to go to the court of law and get stuff rebalanced and stuff like that. So I think uh, he owns like 8% or something. So when the stock goes up, his value of share, like his share value goes up and the ownership in the company actually goes up as well. So he has to sell um, a position and get it below 10%. Otherwise he has, I think, a tax, something in taxes or something. I think he gets taxed heavier. But Apple is by far his biggest position, and I'm not surprised to see why. Next is uh, one that's not so uh, well known. Uh, Ax Axtel Coding Systems, uh, ticker symbol AXTA. It's coding Ax Axelata Coding Systems is a global leader in auto and industrial coatings, generating anywhere from $3 billion to $5 billion in annual revenue. It is the fourth largest producer of coatings in the world. Initially, the fam famously cyclical auto market was one of the hardest hit areas in the pandemic, which reduced demand for the original equipment manufacturers for its coatings. Thankfully, demand has quickly been recovering, and shares are already at more than 100% from their 52-week lows. Although headquartered in Philadelphia, it drew its go back to Germany in 1866, when Herbert Gimpf began coating carriages before transitioning to automobiles. Berkshire has nearly a 10% stake in AXTA, and it trimmed its position very slightly last quarter, selling about 2% of its previous holdings. It has 23.4 million shares at a value of $654 million. Kind of a different Buffett business here, um, but he's well diversified and he owns so much it's hard to even keep track. Next is one of his personal favorites, his biggest banking position uh, in Bank of America Corp. So with a market cap of around $232 billion, Bank of America is the second largest U.S. bank and is also Buffett's second largest public stock holding. Buffett acquired his stake in Bank of America in 2011, and he took a $5 billion stake in the preferred Bank of America stock while the bank was struggling with liquidity. After teetering on the brink of collapsing during the Great Recession, BAC is now a much lower risk investment, giving the strong capital base. Shares are down more than 20% in 2020, but the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury uh, unprecedented willingness to prop, out the economy, prop up the economy makes Bank of America much less risky. Uh, than it would be otherwise. One of Buffett's defining characteristics as an investor has been his bullishness on the financial sector, and while Berkshire surprisingly slashed its exposure to several major bank stocks last quarter, Bank of America was one, wasn't one was one of them. Berkshire actually increased its position in Bank of America uh, by about 9% last quarter, and that's crazy because he did actually sell out of a bunch of banks. Um, PNC Financial, MNT Bank, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, he sold out of a bunch of banks, but he bought major, another major stake in Bank of America. Next, I believe we have another bank stock. You're going to be seeing a lot of banks here. Bank of New York Mellon Corp. Bank of New York Mellon Corp operates in more than 100 markets. The New York City-based bank has 30 about $39 trillion in assets under custody and $2 trillion in assets under management. Its two primary business lines are investment services and investment management. The company's stock is down about 20% year-to-date as the pandemic and rock-bottom interest rates that came with it have been a drag on the financial sector. Berkshire owns about 8.4% of all BK shares, which trade for less than nine times earnings. Like most of the other banks, Buffett owns BK stock also pays a respectable dividend yielding 3.2%. He has about 74 million shares at a value of 2.9% billion dollars next is one that shook up the investment community that being barrett gold ticker symbol g-o-l-d and an uncharacteristic foray into the world of favorite precious metal berkshire bought canadian gold and copper miner barrett gold in the second quarter of 2020 buffett is famously hostile towards gold once saying uh, when he was asked about it it's price prospect i have no views as to where it will be but the one thing i can tell you is it won't do anything between now and then I expect, between now and then, expect look at you. Uh, Buffett's point is that gold has no clear intrinsic value and doesn't pay dividends or churn out earnings. It's not a progressive, a productive asset.
The addition of Bear Gold, although not a huge part of the portfolio, indicates Berkshire is treating its massive portfolio more like a traditional fund, and gold is a classic hedge against the struggling economy and the weakening U.S. dollar. He has about 12 million shares at a value of $290 million. Next, we have Biogen. Biogen is one of the handful of positions Berkshire added to its sprawling portfolio in 2020. Biogen is a Cambridge, Massachusetts-based biotech. It's not exactly the industry Buffett has been known for, but healthcare is a growing part of the portfolio this year. Although it's a relatively small part of the Berkshire pie, it's likely um, a starter position that will be prone to grow over time. To be sure, Biogen isn't expected to post blockbuster growth in the coming years, but it does trade for eight times earnings and boasts an inevitable pipeline. Um, with several mid to large stage drug trials currently in the works, biosimilars known as biogenic medical products have been a bright spot for a bright spot at BIIB and should continue to exhibit strength going forward. He has 643 thousand shares at a, a value of $157 million. So big into biotech. Next is Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, BMY, one of the new additions to Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio in the third quarter, four were well-established global drug makers worth between $140 billion and $210 billion. The dividend yields of more than, with a dividend yield of more than 2.5%, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb is one of the lucky four, and it's also one of the more exciting and of the four growth-wise. Uh, BMY completed the acquisition of Celigen in 2019, doubling down on cancer treatments as it acquired Sungen's blockbuster oncology treatment drug, Revlimid, which was alone responsible for more than $3 billion in sales last quarter, up 10% year over year. Analysts expect earnings per share growth of roughly 17% 2021 by BMY. They hold about 30 million shares at a value of $1.8 million. Sorry, $1.8 billion. Um, next, we have Charter Communications. Charter Communications is the second largest cable TV provider in the U.S. and is the best pure play option for investors who still see value in traditional TV. Facing stiff competition from streaming leaders such as Netflix, Charter has a customer base of 16.2 million video customers, 28.6 uh, million internet subscribers, and 10.5 million phone subscribers. Charter primarily operates in New York, California, the Carolinas, Florida, Ohio, and Texas, despite fears of over cord cutting. Uh, CHTR shares have added more than 34% year-to-date. Charter is currently the 10th largest holding in Berkshire's equity portfolio. Kind of surprised to see it that high. I know a lot of people are cord cutting, uh, but apparently Buffett's still very bullish. He has uh, 5.2 million shares at a value of 3.4 billion. Next is a classic Buffett stock up there with um, American Express, that being Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is the largest and most valuable soda brand in the world, capturing the top spot in both global carbonated soft drink market and the U.S. market for decades now. Coca-Cola is a truly global company, generating the majority of its profits outside the U.S. Top brands include Coca-Cola Classic, Sprite, Fanta, and Minute Maid. Buffett has been a longtime fan of Coca-Cola, first investing in the stock in 1987. Uh, Berkshire's cost basis on the stock is $1.28 billion, meaning its current... Its current $21 billion stake represents more than 1,500% in gains. Today, Coca-Cola stock pays a 3.1% dividend yield, the third largest position in the entire portfolio behind only Apple and Bank of America. Berkshire owns 9.3% of the company through its sizable stake. It owns 400 million shares at a value of $21 billion. Coca-Cola is the company that Buffett is known for, and I love Coca-Cola. It's my favorite drink. <laughs> Next is Davida. Davida is a is a U.S. leader in dialysis, operating more than 2,700 outpatient dialysis clinics, serving more than 200,000 patients domestically in 2019, completed a sale of its Davida Medical Group subsidiary to United Health Group for $43 billion. Uh, it has used the proceeds to pay down its debt and aggressively increase share buybacks, leading to an impressive market-beating performance in the last year. Through mid-November, year-to-date gains stood around 42%. Despite that, DVA stock still trades at a forward earnings multiple of less than 14. At last quarter, Berkshire sold 2 million shares, or about 5% of its stake. Don't take that as a sign of Buffett has stopped believing, though among all the companies in its portfolio, Berkshire controls the largest percentage of the outstanding stock, boasting roughly 32.2% of the entire company. It has 36 million shares at a value of $3.9 billion. Next, another classic uh, Buffett stock in General Motors. 
It's one of the world's largest automakers with sales of more than $115 billion in the last year, yet another of the Buffett's holdings that looked shaky at best in the first quarter. The Oracle's famous patience did him well as he sat on his hands and waited out what has been a mere bump in the road for the auto industry. GM briefly dipped into the red at the second quarter, but it quickly emerged a post to post a more than $4 billion profit in the third quarter. GM is refocusing its business on trucks and SUVs and is also investing heavily in electronic autonomous vehicle technology, which seems savvy over the long term. Berkshire boosted its stake by 5 million shares, or roughly 7% last quarter. They hold 80 million shares at a value of $3.4 billion. This is one of those that he did actually aggressively increase his share count in uh, the last time he filed his... Um, or his quarterly reports. And I was kind of surprised because it's been beaten down. It even cut its dividend. Uh, but he's very bullish on General Motors. Like I said, it's a classic Buffett stock, so I'm not surprised to see him add more shares. Next, we have Globe Life. It's known as a torch mark until it rebranded itself last August. Is a life and supplemental health insurance company that focuses primarily on low to middle income markets. Global Life is headquartered in McKinney, Texas, and has about 3,100 employees. Revenue grew 5% in 2019, and similar degrees of slow but steady growth are expected in 2020 and 2021 as well. Buffett likely appreciates the company's stable earnings, solid balance sheet, and free cash flow. In addition to its Ford earnings multiple, is less than 13. Berkshire owns about a 6.1% stake in the company and left its position in GL unchanged last quarter. So it holds about 6.4 million shares. I've had a value of 584 million. So not surprised here. He is a big, big fan of insurance. And uh, I'm not surprised to see him adding more insurance to his portfolio. I'd actually never heard of Globe Life before. I might need to look into that. Write that down. This is Next J and J, another healthcare giant. J and J is a global healthcare company that develops and markets pharmaceutical products, medical care devices, and consumer health products. The company's leading brands include Band Aid, Neutrogena, Splenda, and Tylenol. J and J stock trades at a reasonable 16 times forward earnings multiple. Why Berkshire's exposure to a stock as stable and cash rich as J and J is so small is a mystery, but it is. This position makes up 0.002% of the financial giant stock portfolio. J&J could end up being a meaningful part of the solution to the pandemic. It's committed to providing 100 million doses of its, of its vaccine to the U.S. government at, at cost. Should its candidate be approved while the pandemic is still raging, the goal is to ramp up manufacturing activities to be able to produce 1 billion doses globally. They hold 327,000 shares at a value of $47 million. This is one that I'm actually kind of surprised that he's not bigger in. He he bought a bunch of pharmaceuticals, but he did not boost his position in Johnson & Johnson. It is a dividend king. He could have bought it at a great value when March came around. I was actually kind of surprised to see that he didn't boost his position in J&J. This is one of my personal favorite stocks, and I'm honestly, like I said, surprised that he didn't boost his position. Next, we have J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, the only stock Buffett completely elim eliminated from Berkshire's portfolio last quarter was warehouse membership chain Costco, but J.P. Morgan Chase was the next closest to being cast out, as Berkshire stole an incredible 95% of its J.P. Morgan stake in that period. It's arguably the most surprising move that was made last quarter, as Buffett is famously a fan of banks, and Berkshire has a con was content to increase its stake in Bank of America. The company rarely comments um, on the impetus... Uh, behind such moves until months or years later, but it's a tad disconcerting for J.P. Morgan shareholders. In the meantime, J.P. Morgan is still the most valuable bank in the U.S., seems to be doing well, and is run by a Wall Street legend, Jamie Dimon. It trades for less than 13 times for earnings and pays a 3.1% dividend. He has about 970,000 shares at a value of 100. Uh, 11 million dollars this one was actually the one that really surprised me because uh, he in, in interviews has talked very very well about the leadership at jp morgan said that he wanted to hold it long term and as it said he cut out 95 percent of it so i wonder what happened at jp morgan chase maybe he thought interest rates were going to slam the company i don't know um he i from what i've seen in interviews and whatnot i have not seen um him talk about his stake in jp morgan quite yet i do think he will eventually talk about it, uh, but I know he cut a lot out of a lot of the financial uh, companies that he owned. But as the article said, this uh, excuse me, this one was the most shocking for me as well because he was such a big fan of J.P. Morgan and Chase for so long. He's held the bank stocks for 
a very long time, and I know Wells Fargo got slammed and has had a lot of bad publicity, but I haven't seen anything that would make headlines that would make him want to sell J.P. Morgan. Um, next, we have Kraft Heinz. Kraft Heinz is Berkshire's fifth biggest equity holding. He has a 26.6% stake in the food giant. It's objectively huge and means the only company in its portfolio, Berkshire, has more voting control over its is uh, DeVita. Often, even a 5 to 10% stake in a public company is enough to get a board seat, so Berkshire could exert quite a lot of, of sway over Kraft Heinz if it was desired. That said, as a passive and hands-off investor, taking an activist bent with uh, Kraft Heinz is unlikely to happen with Buffett. Still, perhaps the owner of Kraft and Oscar Mayer brands could use some guidance. Shares are trading for one-third of their all-time highs. In 2017, it now pays a 5% dividend, uh, 326 million shares at a value of $10.2 billion. This is one of those that it's not a bad investment. Like people always need to, to, to own food. It's just, or need to eat food. Uh, so it's one of those that, you know, people are always going to need to use. It's just people are going towards different brands, towards healthier options, but they do dominate where they are, the markets that they're in. They have very well-known brands. Um, uh, and he just hasn't talked well about them in the media and has said that he's over he overpaid for Heinz specifically. So um, I, I don't think he'll be increasing his position. He even said that if he had money, like if he was starting right now, he wouldn't put this in his portfolio. So I know that they cut the dividend as well. I just think that they have brands that haven't really progressed as well. Um, they haven't shifted towards a healthier in initiative uh, like other brands have, and I think people are more health conscious now than they have been ever. So I just think that they're a little bit behind the times, but that doesn't mean that they're a bad company. I do know, like it said, it's the, the, he's lost like 60% of his value, I think, in his shares too. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, Buffett go back on the board and maybe try to help kind of stabilize the company um, and get it back to its all-time highs. Next, we have Kroger. <coughs> Kroger is one of the newer stocks in the Berkshire Hathaway portfolio with a position uh, initiated in the first quarter of 2020. Kroger is certainly the type of boring, low-tech company that Buffett might like to buy and hold for the long term. While grocery is indeed an industry experiencing steeper competition and a certain level of disruption, Kroger is a well-positioned within the industry and does something Buffett and Vice Chairman Charlie Munger love. It pays a decent, sustainable dividend with room to grow. In fact, Kroger has a track record of boosting its payout, growing its quarterly dividend annually for the last 13 years. The stock currently yields a respectable 2.2%. Berkshire bought more KR in the third quarter, increasing its stake to 3.2%. They hold 25 million shares at a value of three or at a value of $821 million. This is one of those that kind of caught people off guard as well, but I do see why it's a boring company. People need groceries, people need food. So it's kind of like the same play as um, Kraft Heinz, but they bought the grocer instead. Next is Liberty Global. As multiple share classes and Buffett invested in both, Liberty is the largest cable TV operator in Europe, operating primarily in the UK, Belgium, and Eastern Europe. This class A shares have voting rights, but B shares do not. As a result, the A class shares trade at a slight premium, although both stocks are more or less sideways year to date. In the full con context of Berkshire's total holdings, this is a relatively small position that's unlikely to move the needle for Berkshire's own stock in any substantial way. Berkshire trimmed its stake by 6% in the third quarter. They have uh, 18 million shares of Class A and 7.3 million shares of B. Uh, combined value is 580 million. So this is a very small stake for Berkshire. Next is Liberty Latin America. It's another member of the Liberty Media, media family with multiple share classes. Liberty Latin America split off from its parent company in 2018 and is a pure play on telecommunications business in Latin America and the Caribbean. The spinoff serves 7.6 million homes in the region, has 3.6 million mobile subscribers, and generates annual revenue of 3.9 billion. Buffett holds both Class A voting shares and Class C non-voting shares. They have $2.6 million of Class A shares and $1.4 million of Class uh, C shares. Combined value is four points or forty seven million dollars. Next is one that he's known uh he's talked about before being uh Liberty Cyrus XM Group. 
Series C and A are tracking stocks representing Liberty Mutual's equity stake in Series XM holdings. Series A shares have voting rights, whereas Series C shares do not. The tracking stocks represent a 71, or 71.2% ownership stake in Series XM, but have also hold more than $1 billion in debt of streaming leader Pandora Media and uh, terrestrial radio leader iHeartMedia. The tracking stocks trade at a deep discount to their value and the underlying assets, and Sirius XM has been aggressively buying back shares of its stock. Here, Berkshire's holdings are more meaningful, topping $2 billion when combined. It also has a median ownership percentage in each company. 43 million shares of LSXMK, 14.9 million shares in LSXMA, combined value of $2.5 million. Next, we have MasterCard. Along with Visa in American Express, MasterCard rounds out Buffett's exposure to the three dominant forces in the global credit card business. The MasterCard network includes billions of customers and millions of merchants in more than 210 countries. MasterCard operates both the third largest credit and debit networks by volume, according to the Nielsen Report. MasterCard has the highest forward earnings multiple of the three credit card stocks at 40. MA stock is up about 12% year-to-date, outperforming both Visa and American Express. They have 4.6 million shares at a value of $1.5 billion. Next is M&T Bank. It's a U.S. regional bank based in Buffalo, New York, that has more than $127 billion in total assets. M&T is relatively small compared to some of the other banks Buffett owns, barely cracking the Fortune 500 at 438. M&T primarily focuses on commercial and residential real estate and is one of only two banks in the S&P 500 not to lower its dividend during the 2008 financial crisis. M&T shares have been meaningfully hit by the pandemic in 2020. The shares are down about 25% to date. Thankfully, this is a relatively small holding for Berkshire, and it just got smaller. Berkshire sold 35% of its stake in the third quarter. 2.9 million shares at a value of $348 million for M&T Bank. Next, we have Merck, <coughs> another large cap drug maker that Buffett bought. In the third quarter was Merck, the Dow Jones Industrial Average component and roughly $200 billion healthcare giant. It's not a particularly growth-oriented or sexy stock, with analysts expecting roughly 3% revenue growth in 2020. A 7% growth in 2021, shares trade for about 17 times earnings and offer a 3.2% dividend, fitting in perfectly Berkshire's traditional value-oriented approach to stock picking. Despite overall low growth, there are some exciting parts to Merck's drug lineup, Merck's blockbuster drug, Ketra Oncology Treatment saw 21% year-over-year revenue growth in the third quarter. They own 22.4 million shares at a value of $1.8 billion. This is one of those big pharmaceuticals that it bought along with AbbVie. Next is Mondelez International. It's a U.S. food and beverage company headquartered in Deerfield, Illinois. Mondelez is composed of the international snack and food brands that once belonged to Kraft Foods prior to its 2012 spinoff of its North American grocery business. Mondelez has several billion-dollar international food brands, including Belvita, Chips Ahoy, Nabisco, Oreo, and Ritz. Developed uh, markets were solely responsible for Mondelez growth and first in the first three quarters of 2020 at roughly twice the size of its emerging market segment, the 7.1% growth in developed markets more than offset the 72 decline in emerging markets. It has a 2.2% dividend and a reasonable forward earnings multiple of 20. They have 578,000 shares at a value of $33 million. Gotta love Oreos, right? Like You can never go wrong with uh, the, the, the cookie that loves, uh, the milk that loves cookies. Love Oreos. Next is Moody's. He's spoken a lot about Moody's. It even made a small um, name drop in uh, the big short. So Moody's is a U.S. major credit rating agency providing research, analytical tools, and financial recommendations for investors worldwide. Moody's was founded in 1900 and is headquartered in New York City. Moody's Investor Services is the company's credit rating agency that rates both equ- both the quality of the debt and the credit quality of corporate and government institutions. Moody's Analytics offer a range of services and tools that allow investors to quantify and manage risk in global financial markets. MCO stock is up about 15% in the last year, pushing its forward earnings multiple up to 26 As a staple of the U.S. financial service industry, this will likely continue to be a meaningful holding for Berkshire for years to come. They have 24.7 million shares at a value of $6.8 billion. 
Moody's is one of those financial companies that I actually wanted to get into, but it's really expensive. So, um, <clears throat> and the dividend isn't great. Uh, he bought Moody's, I believe, uh, Dividend Data did a video on it. Uh, and his his price was like $18 per share, I think. So he's got a crazy yield on cost for this. Next, we have Pfizer. This was one of the drug stocks that he bought, the pharmaceuticals. Uh, but it was actually the smallest position that he added, even though they had the confirmed coronavirus vaccine in the works. The last of the large cat drug makers Buffett added to Berkshire's portfolio in the third quarter was Pfizer, the $200 billion diversified pharmaceutical giant, paying a 4.1% dividend. Investors might uh, currently associate Pfizer with the promising COVID-19 vaccine, exactly, developed by German partner biotech BNTX. Although this position is quite small in the context of the broader stock portfolio, it accounts for just 001 or 0.1% ownership of Pfizer and is even smaller percentage of all Berkshire's holdings. Don't be surprised if it's small. Initial purchases uh, is just a proverbial toe, a privil sorry, toe in the water with gradual increases to the position to follow. So they think this is going to be a small position that's just going to keep building up. Uh, proverbial, sorry. <laughs> Holdings are 3.7 million shares. It values 133 million. So his share count for Pfizer is lower than Merck, Bristol Myers Squibb, and Avdi. Um, I believe Avdi was actually the biggest um, position. I was surprised to see Pfizer was so small. I think they are waiting for. Uh, they did a spinoff. Uh, they broke the company up. Uh, and they might have been waiting for that to to buy more, uh, seeing how the split would affect the stock. They might even be waiting to see how the um, the vaccine does and to see whether or not it's going to go up or down. Um, I'm not sure. I was kind of surprised to see Pfizer was his smallest out of the out of the uh, pharmaceuticals, given how great of a dividend grower Pfizer has been, given how you know just great of a pipeline that they have for at Pfizer. Um, but I think it's going to be, like they said, it's going to be one of those like toe-in-the-water kind of small positions that they're going to build over time. I just think that there was a lot of, of uh, hype priced into the stock, and that might be why it was such a small position. That's just my guess, though. But PNC Financial Group is a U.S. regional bank headquartered in Pittsburgh and one of the largest U.S. banks by deposits. In addition to retail and business banking, the company also offers wealth and asset management services like the other bank stocks Buffett owns. PNC has a relatively attractive forward earnings multiple, 16.7, and a generous 3.6% dividend, percent dividend. The regional bank, like many others, has seen shares slide in 2020 as PNC stock is down another 18% year-to-date. Another financial stock, Buffett, sold off. Berkshire reduced its position by 64% last quarter. They have 1.9 million shares at a value of $241 million. So this is another one of those banks that he trimmed. I just think he, with low interest rates, I just think he didn't think banks were going to be as profitable, which they won't be. Um, they're dependent on those rates. So um, if interest rates go down, then they can't charge as much to lend out debt, and it, it does really affect their profit margin. So I'm not surprised to see him get out of those. Uh, Procter & Gamble. It's a blue-chip U.S. consumer products company that produces beauty, grooming, health, and home care, and baby and family care products, leading brands include Pampers, Tide, Bounty, Charmin, and Gillette. Procter & Gamble stocks forward earnings multiple of 23 isn't particularly impressive, but its 2.3% dividend and res relatively recession-proof business make it a popular defensive play. As recently as 2016, Buffett had a $4.3 billion stake in the stock, holding 315,000 shares at a value of $45.1 million. Procter & Gamble is one of my favorite stocks. Um, as they said, it's a consumer staple. Um, it's very defensive. They, like, they just uh, listed... Diapers, laundry detergent, um, toilet paper, uh, shaving cream, and shaving products. So it's like everyday stuff that you use. Um, so I, I love Procter & Gamble stock. <coughs> it's going to actually be one of the, the biggest position uh, in, in that set of months for my portfolio. So I'm a huge Procter & Gamble fan myself. Next, uh, we have RH. This one's a little different. RH, the home furnishings retail formerly known as Restoration Hardware, looked like an attractive investment as the year began, with analysts expecting explosive growth over the next five years and shares trading at 1.3 uh, price-to-earnings growth ratio. That turned out to be true, with RH stock now up an incredible 102% year-to-date. First quarter fears surrounding the cyclical economy and the troubled U.S. Uh, 
Consumers turned out to be overblown, with EPS jumping about 30% year-over-year in the third quarter. Due to Berkshire's massive size, it owns about 9% of the entire company, but even that position is a relatively small percentage of the Berkshire portfolio. They have 1.7 million shares at a value of $737 million. Next, we have Sirius XM. In addition to its stake in Liberty Media, Sirius XM uh, tracking stock. Buffett also has a direct investment in Sirius XM. It is a satellite radio operator that offers more than 140 channels of music and talk radio throughout the U.S. In early 2019, it completed its $3 billion buyout of streaming radio leader Pandora Media, giving the company a large stake in both streaming and satellite radio markets. Pandora has about 58.6 million monthly active users, and Sirius XM has 30.5 million self-paced subscribers. They have 50 million shares at a value of $320 million. Next... We have Snowflake. This one uh, got headlines, and I'm pretty sure this was <coughs> made headlines because this is different than what he usually invests in. Another sign that Berkshire is moving beyond the classic value investing philosophy. It actually bought a richly valued tech stock, which is definitely not a normal Buffett move. And at the time of its initial public offering, no less, which he never does IPOs. With IPOs often being overpriced, Buffett has tended to bide his time before buying into positions in the past. But everything about Berkshire's stake in this cloud-based uh, data warehouse company shows Buffett's successors are increasingly exercising more influence over the portfolio decisions. Arguably, the fairest criticism of Berkshire's portfolio in the years past has it been its willing underexposure to tech stocks, especially those with huge growth potential. Snowflake, which grew revenue 121% in the last quarter, falls into that category. They own 6.1 million shares at a value of $1.6 billion. That is one thing that a lot of people have criticized Berkshire for is they were overextended in the financial sector um, and they hadn't gotten into any big tech as in FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, um, Microsoft. So now he owns a big stake in Apple. It's his biggest position and now he has Snowflake as well. Um, and he owns a stake in Amazon. So the younger uh, people that are going to be managing the fund uh, after Buffett and his successors, I think you're going to be seeing a lot more companies like Snowflake being added because they have a massive growth potential. Um, and I think they will help kind of straighten out the portfolio. I know I love Buffett's method of investing. He's done very well with insurance companies um, and done very well with consumer staple brands and companies, but I think he's just kind of behind the curve when it comes to new tech, and I think that will really help um, boost their profits and uh, the value of the stock as well. I think that he missed out on a lot of opportunities, and it, he was right to because he didn't understand them, but given the, the prowess that he has inside of his investing circle when it comes to his successors i think we'll be seeing a lot more tech in in the portfolio and i think the returns will reflect that next is stone co uh, it's a brazilian financial technology company founded in 2012 that specializes in electronic payments stone co had an ipo in october of 2018 and now trades for almost three times earnings it's 20 oh, sorry three times it's 24 dollar ipo price it has been one of the few growth stocks to grab buffett's attention and despite the virus spread in brazil this year their company has been at least an eight percent market share the stock recently hit all-time highs and is up more more than 70 percent 2020 so they have 14.2 million shares at a value of 967 million dollars next we have store capital it's a real estate investment trust that specializes in the acquisition, investment, ownership, and management of single-tenant net lease real estate. As a REIT, Store Capital has an excellent source of dividend income, yielding 4.5%. In addition, Store Capital has avoided disruption of its retail tenants by strategically avoiding businesses threatened by e-commerce distribution. Its long-term leases also provide more financial stability than other REITs. The pandemic was initially seen as a major threat to Store's previous occupation rate of 99.7, even though 75% of its tenants had investment grade credit quality to start the year. In May, Store shares were down as much as 45% year-to-date, but as the fear abated and the outlook improved, Store has erased the majority of its losses, although shares are still down 14%. They hold about 24.4 million shares at a value of $773 million. I do believe that they did increase the... Um, their position uh late last or late this year i believe this is one of the companies that they added to next we have suncor energy it's a canadian oil exploration and production company that produces between 680 million and 710 million barrels 
of sorry, thousand six hundred eight thousand or seven hundred ten thousand dollars of equivalent per day, uh, oil per day. Uh, Suncor's production primarily comes from oil sands, but has also had a large conventional oil operation. In addition, Suncor has four hundred sixty thousand barrels per day in refining capacity. Its shares are down more than fifty three percent year to date as the global oil market slumps drag on. Although exposure to Suncor is relatively limited as far as the Berkshire portfolio is concerned, SU Swiftfall hasn't been pretty. They own 19 million shares at a value of 900, or sorry, $293 million. So this is one of those that's been slammed by the oil market, but it's a small position, so they're not super worried about it. <coughs> Next, we have Synchrony Financial. Like M&T, Synchrony Financial is a relatively small bank compared with some of the other banks that Buffett owns. It operates exclusively online with no physical branches. It specializes in private label credit card partnerships with companies like Amazon and Lowe's, and it is previously a subsidiary of GE Capital before being spun off in 2014. Like many other stocks, it's vigorously rebounded from its spurring lows, with shares now up more than 140% from its early 2020 depths. 20 million shares, $590, or $500 million, $98 million, so almost $600 million. This, one's, uh, this is one of those that I actually might want to look into. It does not say if it has... Uh, a dividend, which is what I go after, but I like the private label credit card partnerships. Sounds like a very profitable business, and they don't have any branches, so that's a it sounds like a very good business. TV Pharmaceutical. After acquiring Allergen's generic drug business back in 2015, TV Pharmaceutical is now one of the world's largest generic drug makers in the world. Its stock was pounded in August 2017, dropping more than 40% in three days when the company reported a huge earnings miss in the cut its guidance and dividend. Since that time, management has been on a cost-cutting spree and has prior towards getting the company's debt levels under control. As a result, its forward earnings multiple is down to just 3.6. Analysts expect the company to return to a modest revenue and operating profit growth in 2021. They have 43 million shares at a value of $403 million. So more pharmaceuticals. Next, we have one that kind of shocked people, which was T-Mobile. Another third quarter addition to the Buffett portfolio was T-Mobile. Although not particularly aggressive bet in terms of size, Berkshire's initial stake is just 0.2% of its entire portfolio. It's aggressive in the sense that TMS is a growth-oriented and richly valued of the three major carriers. By the end of the third quarter, its stock is already up more than 68% in 2020 alone, and shares have risen further since then. Of course, there is a reason. It has rallied in the last quarter. The company added more than 2 million customers, crossing the 100 million customer milestone and surpassing AT&T to become the second largest wireless carrier. They hold 2.4 million shares at a value of $314 million. So T-Mobile was one of those that he added in the last quarter, and it was kind of a shock, but um, given that they are growing and a, 5G, a good 5G play as well, I'm not surprised to see it added. Next, we have UPS, which I didn't actually know that he owned. That's kind of cool. UPS, uh, United Parcel Service, provides air, sea, and ground, and rail logistics, freight, and customers' uh, services. UPS has more than 490,000 employees, connecting more than 220 nations. It operates a fleet of 269 airplanes and 125,000 delivery vehicles that deliver an average of 21.9 million daily packages and documents. UPS has greatly benefited from the rise of e-commerce in the past 20 years, and especially the pandemic-driven rise in demand of 2020. UPS, which trades at 20 times forward earnings, is up more than 40% year-to-date, and it offers investors a 2.4% dividend. They hold about uh, 59,400 shares. Value is $9.9 million. I've actually looked into UPS as well, and I really do like it. I might actually add it relatively soon, uh, but given that 40% year-to-date spike, I might want to wait on that. We're running out the list here, guys, with another bank. We have about five companies left. U.S. Bank Corp. is the fifth largest commercial bank in the U.S. with a $495 billion under assets. U.S. Bank Corp. was founded in 1929 and is headquartered in Minneapolis. Its stock has been more than just a market la- has been more than just a market laggard this year, uh, shedding about 25% of its financials have gotten slaughtered. The stock's forward multiple earnings multiple is 13.9 alongside a dividend yield of 3.9%. Both look nice, but Buffett will be closely watching the company's financials for weakness, given U.S. Bank is Berkshire's seventh largest, seventh largest equity holding. So the financials have been destroyed, but this is one of the bank stocks I was surprised that I didn't see 
Buffett take anything away from. He didn't sell any shares of U.S. Bancorp, but he did of almost every other bank that he owned except Bank of America. Uh, most bank stocks got a big hit when it comes to share count in the Berkshire portfolio, and he has confidence in U.S. Bank. I actually own U.S. Bank. I, I, mean, I mean, I use U.S. Bank, uh, and I thought about owning it as well, <clears throat> simply because I actually bank there. But it'll be one of those that I might add in the future. Next, uh, we have VeriSign. It's a domain name registration specialist headquartered in Reston, Virginia. It provides internet security services such as the denial of service protection, I defend security intelligence services, and manage domain name security. With the Gaudi Ford earnings multiple of 33, the stock isn't the typical Buffett value stock. Buffett has always loved market leaders with strong business execution, two areas in which it excels. Stocks up more than 120% overall in the past five years. Berkshire's $2.5 billion position is good for an 11.2% stake in the company. They own 12.8 million shares at a value of $2.5 billion. Never actually heard of that one. I was surprised. Visa. Buffett feels no need to pick a winner if he likes the entire industry. In 2018, Buffett said payments are a huge deal worldwide. Berkshire has stakes in all major credit card operators as well as several smaller financial technology companies. Visa operates the largest electronic payments network in the world, including the world's largest credit card network by volume and the second largest global debt network. debit network. Visa's forward earnings multiple around 31 isn't particularly impressive, but the credit card giant reported 4% year-over-year payment volume growth in its September quarter. So they are the number one credit card stock. So if he likes an industry, he just buys a lot of it. He did the same thing with healthcare. I know he owns. He is big and known for American Express. That is his biggest holding in this space. Then I believe it is Visa, and then I think it's MasterCard. Um, but <coughs> he just buys the entire industry. Um, and I think he's right. I think uh, you know payment processing is huge. Um, I just think it's funny that he likes American Express more than he likes Visa. But I actually like American Express more than Visa too. Next is Wells Fargo. Oh, this one's going to be rough. So uh, this is one of the banks that he really cut out of. Like, I'm surprised that he cut more J.P. Morgan Chase than he did Wells Fargo. But uh, headquartered in San Francisco, Wells Fargo has more than $1.9 trillion in assets. The bank has struggled with a series of legal and public relations issues in recent years stemming from overly aggressive marketing practices. Buffett has generally stuck with Wells Fargo through dark times, although his patience is starting to wear thin. In the third quarter of 2020, Buffett slashed his stake of Wells Fargo by 46%, fed restrictions on expansion as well as what may be a far too conservative allocation for loan losses has caused shares to crater this year wells fargo is down by more than 50 percent to date they own about 127 million shares at a value of 3.2 billion dollars this is one of those that i'm not surprised to see buffett just destroy that position they cut their dividend from 52 cents a share all the way down to 10 cents a share so he lost a bunch of money in dividends so he didn't gain as much for holding it um and he probably just wanted to get out of the bank i mean he cut nearly half of his position and that's just this quarter i know he's cut more um in other earlier quarters of the year uh it's just been a whirlwind of bad news um they had to pay like tax refunds or something like that for the fake phony accounts um, and they just had had so much bad press, so <clears throat> not surprised. On top of the dividend cut, um, which really did put a dent on his passive income, it destroyed his passive income. Um, so I'm not surprised that he's losing faith in the company. Um, I know he's stuck by it for a pretty long time. I think about a decade he's held the bank stocks, but uh, he's trimmed major positions. And Wells Fargo was a huge position for him and Charlie Munger. Uh, they talked very well about it. They even you know, kind of tried to defend it uh, when he was asked about it in interviews. I just think he, he ran out of steam for the stock. I think he, he ran it, – it's not in his favor anymore. And I think he would rather buy Bank of America. I mean they you don't see you know Bank of America or U.S. Bank. <laughs> having any um, faulty account issues um, or bad practices under management. So I think he just feels more comfortable with Bank of America and U.S. Bank. Um, and I think he's going to – I think you're going to see another big cut from Wells Fargo when it comes to share count from Buffett. That uh, is the end of our list today. So we had <laughs> – um, Avi, Amazon, American Express, Apple, um, 
Axelita Coding Systems, Bank of America, Bank of New York Mellon, Bear Gold, Biogen, Bristol Miller Squibb, Charter Communications, Coca-Cola, DeVita, General Motors, Globe Life, which I need to look into, Johnson & Johnson, J.P. Morgan, Kraft, Kroger, Liberty Global, Latin America, Liberty XM, MasterCard, M&T Bank, Merck, Mondelez, Moody's, Pfizer, PNC, Procter & Gamble, RH, Sirius XM, Snowflake, Stone Coast, Store Capital, Suncor, Synchrony Financial, Tivia, T-Mobile, United Parcel, U.S. Bank, Verisign, Visa, and Wells Fargo. Out of these companies, guys, the ones that I was... Th oh, sorry, I clicked it. Um, the ones that I was the most interested in were uh, UPS... Uh, and Bank of America. <clears throat> so, uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the complete rundown of uh, the list of Buffett's current Berkshire Hathaway portfolio and his holdings. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button when you do hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates. Uh, I had fun going through seeing different companies that he owned, um, and I might even uh, add a couple to my portfolio. So, thanks for enjoying the ride. Thanks for riding along with me going through his portfolio. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next Stock Market News Update. Take care, guys.